بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I'm Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim, Assistant Professor of Obsangaini, Mansoura University Today we'll talk about abortion Regarding definitions, we have a recent definition which is interruption or termination of pregnancy before fetal medical viability which is 20 weeks or 500 grams fetal weight Viability means that the fetus is capable of extrauterine survival, while the old definition is interruption or termination of pregnancy before age of legal viability, which was 28 weeks in Egypt, 24 in UK, and 20 weeks in USA. Regarding types, we have spontaneous abortion, which is now called miscarriage or early pregnancy loss, or induced one. Starting with spontaneous abortion, miscarriage. For definition, it means interruption or termination of pregnancy before fetal viability through natural passage without any mechanical or medical intervention. It accounts for 10 to 15 percent of all clinical pregnancies. For the etiology, we have fetal causes like fetal death, second is chromosomal abnormalities which accounts for about 50 to 80 percent of cases of early abortion. Many types, of which the most important is neomedical disorder, monosomy and triosomy, or the structural disorders. Regarding the effects, there is non-formation of the embryo, which is called blighted ovum or empty sac, or if continuation of pregnancy occurred, congenital malformation of the embryo will result. Second is the maternal causes. We have anatomical factors which could be congenital like cervical incompetence, malaria and duct anomalies, uterine hypoplasia, or acquired condition like acquired cervical incompetence, intrauterine adhesion or synechi, tumors, fibroid polyps or submucous fibroids, displacement of the uterus like RVF fixed or uterine prolapse, endometriosis and adenomyosis. Infection, including storage infection, HIV, mycoplasma, and the typhoid, endocrinal factors, especially luteal phase defect, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, thyroid disorders, whether hypo or hyperthyroidism. The immunological factors, which is an important factor in the miscarriage, like RHI immunization, and the important antiphospholipid syndrome and systemic lobe of erythematosis and other immunological factors. For the hereditary thrombophilia, which means genetic defect in the factors of coagulation, results in coagulation in the vasculature of the placenta, leading to miscarriage. Miscellaneous causes include psychological factor, stress, fear, and anxiety, if severe may cause abortion, chronic disease, especially uncontrolled, like hypertension, heart disease, chronic renal failure, and the debilitating TB infection, nutritional deficiencies, environmental factors, including smoking, which is widely seen nowadays, alcoholism, excessive intake of caffeine, some drugs like quinine, ergot, and the cytotoxic drugs, inhalation, anesthetics, toxins, and ionizing radiation. Finally, trauma, especially plant external trauma to the abdomen, or trauma during abdominal operation with rough manipulation of the uterus may result in abortion. Maternal causes Abnormal sperms give rise to pathological zygote which by turn will end into abortion. Abnormalities of placenta and amniotic fluid. Acute polyhydramnus due to uterine distension which initiates uterine contraction expelling the distending contents circumvallate or marginate placenta or partial vesicular mood. And finally, if we didn't find any cause of the above four major categories, we claim that we have idiopathic miscarriage. For types, miscarriage or abortion is classified according to the time of occurrence into early abortion in the first trimester, which is 80%, 
and late portion in the second trimester up to 20 weeks, which is 20%. According to the number, we have accidental or isolated or sporadic abortion. We have repeated abortion, two successive miscarriages, and the third recurrent or habitual abortion occurrence of three or more successive abortions, and this will be discussed in detail later. How abortion occurs? The mechanism is different according to the age, the gestational age. Less than eight weeks the gestational age, there is repeated attacks of decidual separation. Until complete separation of gestational sac, the sac is in the uterine cavity. Uterus deals with it as a foreign body, uterine contractions. Then expulsion of products of conception outside the uterus. While pregnancy between 8 and 12 weeks, there is rupture of the decidua capsularis with expulsion of the fetus followed by separation and expulsion of the decidua. More than 12 weeks is considered like a miniature labor where rupture of membrane stores, then followed by expulsion of the fetus, followed by expulsion of the placenta. What about pathological changes in aborts? We have what's called blighted ovum, which is defined as an embryonic pregnancy or ova dysgenesis. It is a sac with large volume of fluid absent embryonic pool. By ultrasound, it will shown as ill-defined gestational sac, small gestational sac in relation to the gestational age or absent embryonic pool with a sac measuring more than 30 millimeters, eight weeks gestation. Carnia small, a variety of missed abortion in which dead embryo is in the early pregnancy surrounded by clotted blood forming what's called bloody mole. Then fibrosis occurred, leading to what's called fleshy mole. Dissolution occurs in early weeks and the fetus is totally absorbed. Fetus compresses where amniotic fluid is absorbed and the fetus is compressed and desiccated. Fetus papricious or mummification, which the fetus is so dry, compressed like a parchment. Then fetal maceration may occur, and finally calcium deposition leading to what's called lithium or calcified fetus. For the complications, we have early complications, including hemorrhage, infection, which is called septic abortion, shock, whether for hypovolemic, septic, or neurogenic shock, trauma with uterine perforation, cervical or vaginal laceration during attempts of surgical evacuation by inexperienced personnel. RH isoimmunization in the RH negative females, so we should give the anti-D immunoglobulins or RH negative females in all types of abortion to guard against RH isoimmunization. In content evacuation, incomplete evacuation and retained products of conception. For the late complications, we have what's called intrauterine adhesion of synechi, resulting in secondary infertility, sometimes ectopic pregnancy, resulting from chronic endometritis and salpingitis, placenta previa, placental abruption, cervical incontinence, traumatic injury to the cervical canal and cervical osses, low birth weight due to prematurity, and IGR in subsequent pregnancies. For the clinical picture, we have symptoms and signs. For symptoms, sure, we have symptoms of pregnancy. This is followed by appearance of vaginal bleeding, usually occurs before pain, and is variable in amount and color according to the type of abortion. Pain usually occurs after bleeding and is variable according to the type of abortion. Then, passage of products of conception and passage of watery fluid bare vagina due to rupture of membrane in second trimester abortion cases. For the signs, we have general signs including pallor, tachycardia, hypotension according to the amount of lost blood. Local, we have uterine size in relation to the build of amenorrhea, sometimes it's equal to the build of amenorrhea, or lower than if part of the process of conception is expelled. 
cervix is either closed or opened according to the clinical type of abortion. And finally, membranes either intact or ruptured according to the state of abortion. For investigations, to detect abortion, we should do pregnancy test to document pregnancy and ultrasound. But notice that if the abortion or the fetus is dead more than two weeks, the pregnancy test sometimes be negative. To detect the cause, like chromosomal and immunological studies, which is sometimes done at the time of abortion, especially chromosomal, to have karyotyping of the products of conception trying to diagnose the cause of abortion. Clinical types. Spontaneous abortion may be one of the following types. Actually, these types can occur in succession or we proceed to one of them directly. Starts with threatened abortion, then inevitable abortion, incomplete abortion, complete abortion, cervical abortion, missed abortion, and the septic type, which is called septic abortion. This photo shows different types of abortion. Notice in the threatened abortion, the first photo, there is tackling of blood and the cervix is closed and pain is limited. Pregnancy is okay. The fetus is in situ and still living. In the case of inevitable abortion, the fetus is still living, attached to the uterus, but the cervix is open and the bleeding increased. Then in the incomplete abortion, the fetus is expelled outside the uterus and there is placenta and membranes and the cervix is still opened. Cases of missed abortion, the cervix is closed, no bleeding, but the fetus is dead and duration of the pregnancy is more than measured by ultrasound. Special type, which is cervical abortion, where the fetus and the placenta is totally separated and expelled outside the uterine cavity, but retained into the cervical canal above the level of the cervical external os. This table demonstrates the differences between different types of miscarriage, starting from the threatened abortion, and then inevitable one, incomplete and complete. Notice in the fate of threatened abortion, sometimes cases continue pregnancy, and sometimes it's changed into inevitable and missed abortion. Usually, the first thing in the diagnosis it is to differentiate the cervix is opened or not, and the degree of pain and bleeding. This will categorize the case into one of these categories. Cervical abortion. By definition, variety of inevitable abortion in which products of conception is totally separated from the uterus and retained in the cervical canal. Etiology, stenosis of the external os is not dilated and so the products of conception is hindered or accumulated above its level. Diagnosis, considerable bleeding, severe colky pain trying to expel the contents and the cervix is enlarged barrel shaped. Treatment, we do cervical dilatation under anesthesia, of course, and then removal of products of conception using ring forces. Missed abortion, defined as retention of dead embryo or fetus within the uterus for days or weeks. Some define missed abortion as retention of dead products of conception for more than or equal four weeks. Regarding its mechanism, repeated attacks of colloid decidual separation residual hemorrhage leading to death of the embryo or fetus, but progesterone is still secreted. So the uterus is relaxed and there is no expulsion of the embryo of the, or the fetus outside the uterus. Complications, if retained within the uterus for more than four weeks, sober head infection may issue, leading to what's called septic abortion or coagulopathy with consumption of fibrinogen leading to hypofibrinogenemia and the IC. Regarding diagnosis, 
we have symptoms. There is gradual regression of symptoms of pregnancy. The dark brown or brown juice discharge, vaginal discharge may be present. Failure to feel fetal movements if it was felt before, after quickening, or cessation of fetal movement. Failure of abdominal enlargement. Regarding signs, uterine size, of course, lower than the duration of amenorrhea. Examining the cervix, reveal to close the cervix. Fetal heart sounds are not audible. For investigations, pregnancy tests become negative if the death of the fetus was more than two weeks ago. Ultrasound is diagnostic in case of missed abortion or blighted ovum will usually give typical picture of deformed gestational sac with absence of fetal heartbeats or fetal bull. And if the pregnancy is more than eight weeks, we'll notice absence of cardiac pulsation. Differential diagnosis causes of undersized uterus or on the level lower than duration of amenorrhea and cause of the snowstorm appearance on ultrasound, physicular mole, missed abortion, and generated submucous fibroid. For treatment, sometimes we adapt expectant treatment if there is no complications, no infection, or DIC, and we should wait for three to four weeks because spontaneous evacuation of the uterus will occur in most cases. We proceed to termination of pregnancy in cases of inevitable abortion or are indicated in the following conditions. Non-occurrence of spontaneous evacuation after four weeks, development of bleeding, infection, or coagulopathy, and the patient is very anxious. And we usually don't do that. We usually give a cover of antibiotic and proceed for termination of pregnancy medically. And in most cases, this is successful. If any complication is shown, we should, treatment, we should do treatment of complications. Septic abortion. This is defined as infection superimposed on any type of abortion. The claim organisms include Staphylococcus aureus, hemolytic streptococci, E. coli, anaerobes, Cholestridia mollichii, the dangerous, the dangerous one, and bacteroids. Roots of infection, either exogenous from attendance, septic instruments, or towels during manipulation. Endogenous from the lower genital tract flora, which becomes pathogenic, or autogenous or hematogenous, while infection is spreads from septic focus anywhere in the body through bloodstream. For the pathology, infection may be in the products of conception, which is called infected abortion, or may reach to the uterine wall causing endometritis, or may reach to the circulation resulting in what's called septicemia. Complications septic shock, acute renal failure, and DIC. For the diagnosis, symptoms and signs, clinical picture of any type of abortion. As we mentioned, infection can occur on, any, on top of any type of abortion, especially the criminal one. Any criminal abortion should be considered septic abortion until proved otherwise. General manifestations of infection, like anorexia, nausea, vomiting, headache, malaise, and toxic load. Fever and tachycardia, there is lower abdominal pain, offensive vaginal discharge, and tender involuted uterus with tender cervical motion with manifestations of complications, either septic shock or DIC. To investigate septic abortion, we should do ultrasound. We find remnants of rise of conception in the uterus. CBC will reveal leukocytosis culture and sensitivity testing from the vaginal discharge or blood in case of septicemia doing blood film and the blood culture and sensitivity. Investigation for complications, we should evaluate the kidney function and the coagulation profile, finding, try to find any complication. For prevention, avoid criminal abortion. As we mentioned, it is considered septic until proved otherwise. Use the strict aseptic precautions and they give antibiotics during manipulation or evacuation of the uterine contents. For the treatment, we should isolate the patient, bed rest in a semi-sitting position, which will help drainage of the infection and infected discharge from the uterus. Light nutritive diet and liberal fluids, 
give analgesics, antibiotics, and antibiotics. We usually start with the stable antibiotics to cover the whole spectrum of the microorganisms, whole spectrum penicillin or kephalosporin plus gentamicin and metronidazole. This will cover the mixed infection and then change according to the results of culture and sensitivity testing after doing this work. Sometimes we need anti-gaseous, anti-gas gangrene serum if the Clostridium mollichii infection is encountered or suspected. Of course, we should correct the general condition of the patient using anti-shock measures with intravenous fluids, fresh blood transfusion, which will increase immunity, and we can give corticosteroids. Evacuation, surgical evacuation should be postponed for about 24 hours till normalization of fever, except in cases with severe resistant infection or severe bleeding, evacuation should be done soon under cover of antibiotics. In rare cases, a me is the final management, especially if we have suspected infection with Clostridium mollichii, or there is uterine perforation during manipulation. Observation, we should observe our patient for pulse, blood pressure, temperature, urine output, and the fluid intake until the patient is normalized. For differential diagnosis of abortion, we have causes of bleeding in early pregnancy, which may be obstetric causes and associated local gynecological causes. For the obstetric causes, we should exclude ectopic pregnancy, vesicular mole, loss of twin, decidual reaction in the cervix and implantation bleeding that sometimes occur at the time of implantation. The local gynecological cause which should be excluded in absence of any obstetric cause like severe infection, cervical erosion, rupture of varicosis in the valve or vagina, ulcers, polyps, and the cancer cervix or cancer vagina. This is done by doing local vaginal examination and using casco speculum to evaluate the source of bleeding. Post-abortive bleeding. By definition, the resistant or recurrent vaginal bleeding within four weeks after a portion. Etiology include retained products of conception, uterine atony, which is not common after a portion, sometimes trauma like perforated uterus, cervical laceration or vaginal lacerations, coagulopathies like hypofibrogenemia or DIC that may complicate certain types of abortions, especially the septic one, sub-involution of the uterus. Sometimes infection causing endometritis and local causes in the uterus like fibroids or polyp or RDF uterus may be the cause. We should also exclude gestational trophoblastic tumor and sometimes hormonal factors like hyperthyroidism or hypo-ovarian function due to pituitary failure. Now we proceed for the important topic, which is the recurrent or habitual apportion. By definition, it is defined as occurrence of three or more successive spontaneous clinically recognized abortions. The incidence, about 0.2% of all clinical pregnancies. Etiology, only undisputed causes are chromosomal abnormalities and antiphospholipid syndrome. These are the most important. Sometimes we have fetal cause, which includes chromosomal abnormalities, especially triosomy. Triosomy 16 actually is the most common. Maternal causes like anatomical factor in the uterus, infection, endocrinal factors, little phase defect, uncontrolled diabetes, and hypo or hyperthyroidism, immunological factors, especially the antiphospholipid syndrome, hereditary thrombophilia, miscellaneous causes like psychological factor, chronic debilitating disease, and nutritional deficiencies. After excluding all these causes, we have about 33 to 50 percent of cases are idiopathic without definite cause and of course management will be empirical. How we can proceed for evaluation for a case of recurrent or habitual miscarriage? Starting by history, we should evaluate personal history. Increased maternal or maternal age may be a cause or may help to reach a cause. 
of static history, deliveries, history of difficult labor may point to trauma to the cervix, leading to incompetent cervix. We should analyze history of previous abortions regarding the number and the pattern, duration of pregnancy at which the abortion occurred. Recurrent early abortion usually points to chromosomal abnormalities, which is the commonest cause, sometimes anatomical factor like submucous fibroid, luteal phase defect, antiphospholipid syndrome, or chronic nephrites. Recurrent abortion with decreasing duration of pregnancy usually points to cervical incontinence or RH incompatibility, although RH incompatibility is now a rare cause owing to the usual use of anti D immunoglobulins. The current abortion with increasing duration of pregnancy usually points to hypoplasia of the uterus or the syphilis. Characters of abortion should also be evaluated. Was it living? That means usually a local uterine cause like cervical incontinence did usually try to find the general or fatal cause for abortion. Special characters of the miscarriage. We should evaluate characters of abortion of cervical incompetence. From past history, we should find any medical disorder that can point, like diabetes, like uncontrolled hypertension, coronary renal disease, history of infections, surgical or gynecological operations that can explain incompetent cervix or other lesions, family history, consanguinity, or family history of thrombophilia, present history, gestational gestational age, symptoms of pregnancy, symptoms of abortion or cervical circulation, examination, signs of the cause can be detected like medical disorder or examination of the general manifestations of any associated disease. For investigations, we have to do two investigations. The first are for detection of the cause Genetic study, like we mentioned, early abortion usually points for chromosomal abnormalities. We do genetic study for both parents, and if we can have a biopsy from the abortus, it will be very diagnostic. Investigations for anatomical defects, we can use histocell bendiogram or hysteroscopy in non pregnant cases. Ultrasound would help also in detection. Serological tests for infection, actually, not important nowadays. Hormonal profile for endocrinal defects, luteal phase defect, diabetes needs hypo or hyperthyroidism. Hereditary thrombophilia screening, investigations for maternal chronic disease. For monitoring of subsequent pregnancy, we do serial serum beta HCG assessment to find out the doubling of the HCG. We should evaluate ultrasound maternal serum alpha fetoprotein to screen for chromosomal abnormalities and fetal karyotyping by coronary villa sampling or amniocentesis. The recommendation of American College of Obstetrics 2001 recommended only two types of testing as having a clear value in investigating a case of recurrent abortion. Parental cytogenic analysis and the anticardiolibine lobus anticoagulant antibody assay for cases of suspected antiphospholipid syndrome. This is the only two recommended evaluations. Regarding the treatment of recurrent abortion, before pregnancy, we can treat any associated cause if treatable. We should control strictly the general condition of the mother. We should correct any disease, any hormonal abnormality. And of course, infection should be treated. During subsequent pregnancy, general lines includes reassurance and psychological support, rest, physical and mental, avoid intercourse, adequate diet, vitamins, mineral supplementation. And then we should treat the cause if possible. Cervical circulation, if it is indicated, we should Supply natural progesterone may be beneficial, especially if we have documented luteal phase defect, optimal glycemic control in cases of diabetic patient, antithrombotic therapy using either aspirin or combination of aspirin or heparin for antiphospholipid syndrome or thrombophilia once pregnancy is confirmed and continued throughout pregnancy. We should control any chronic disease. We should control diabetes, hypertension, 
renal disease or whatever the chronic condition. Observation for development of any problems as preeclampsia, preterm labor, and IUGR. Sometimes we give early prophylactic corticosteroids at 28 weeks of gestation to enhance the lung maturity. Delivery, usually elective cesarean section is the route. Induction of labor should be used if the condition permits vaginal delivery without any hazards for the fetus. Cervical incontinence, one of the causes of the recurrent mid-trimestral miscarriage with decreasing, decreasing duration of pregnancy. It's defined as inability of the cervix to maintain pregnancy till term due to wide internal loss. Etiology, either the condition is functional, congenital weakness of the cervix in association with the uterine anomalies, or anatomical. There is actual trauma to the cervix that lead to injury of the internal oscillation. Like using forceps or ventus or breech extraction before for cervical dilatation, manual cervical dilatation during labor to enhance or augment labor, rapid delivery, unrepaired cervical tear missed during vaginal delivery, rapid mechanical dilatation of the cervix during the and, and see more than eight Hagar dilator, amputation or colonization of the cervix in management of CIN or a similar condition. To diagnose incompetent cervix, we should evaluate history, history of the cause. Like we mentioned, sometimes it may refer to incompetent cervix, like difficult labor or forceps or ventose delivery. The current mid trimester abortion was decreasing duration of pregnancy. Abortions are characterized by sudden painless rupture of membrane, associated with little or no bleeding, and followed by complete painless expulsion of the fetus without anomalies. So, if we have history like that, we should search for incompetent cervix. Recurrent preterm labor with decreasing duration may also be a presentation of recurrent uh, miscarriage or recurrent preterm labor due to incompetent cervix. For examination, we find short patulous cervix with bulging membranes through the, the cervix. Cervical tear may be present. Investigations. We can evaluate our case in between pregnancies by doing a test by Hager dilator. If the dilator Hager 8 passes without pain, that means that the cervix is patulous. Histocell pentagram sometimes it shows wide internal loss with funneling of the cervix, and hysteroscopy is, admi is admitted easily without any dilatation. During the pregnancy, we do evaluation of the cervix at the tense or 16th week, we find wide internal os more than 8 millimeters, short cervix less than 2 centimeters, funneling of the cervix with preclusion of membranes through cervical canal. For prevention, we should avoid the cost of factors, especially traumatic vaginal delivery and properly repairing the cervical tears. For the treatment, in between pregnancies, some operations are developed to regain cervical contents. However, they are not so successful as circulation. During pregnancy, we can do cervical circulation, which is defined as encircling cervical canal with a suture to support the weak the cervix. This is ideally done between 12 weeks to ensure absence of fetal abnormalities and 14 weeks after that, the uterine manipulation is difficult. For the technique, we have three types. The usual one, the McDonald circulage, which includes a burst string suture, applied at the level of the internal os, passed around the cervix and tied posteriorly. The original Schrodinger's circulage, the tied suture is passed around the internal os under vaginal mucosa through two small transverse vaginal incision at 6 and 12 o'clock after upward mobilization of the bladder and peritoneum of the legless pouch. This technique is somewhat difficult, and we usually do McDonald's one. The third technique is the abdominal circulation. This is indicated in cases of amputation of the cervix or deep cervical tear, and if we have failure of the vaginal Schrodinger or McDonald's circulation. 
this advantage, it necessitates delivery by caesarean section. We usually remove the cervical stitch at 37 weeks if the technique of vaginal circulation was used, while it is removed during caesarean section if we do caesarean section in the presence of abdominal circulation. This photo shows the site of application of the circulation and the McDonald one, where the bursa string is applied and tied posteriorly. Complications of cervical circulation include accidental rupture of membrane and the introduction of infection causing chorioamnionitis. Sometimes we add cervical laceration or cervical hematoma due to injury of the cervical branch of the uterine artery, which should be avoided by avoid application of the suture at three and nine o'clock of the surface. Cervical fibrosis leading to cervical dystocia in the following labor. Bladder injury, increased uterine irritability, which may end eventually in abortion induction of abortion or preterm labor, and increased incidence of operative vaginal delivery, and of course, cesarean section. Thank you.